Um, I chose some of that video footage because it shows sort of the, the somewhat crazy eyes that were going on at this stage of the expedition. You'd think, wouldn't you, that the, the hardest bit of walk in the Amazon would be, I don't know, the venomous snakes, the jaguars, um, the inherent jungle dangers, I guess, uh, the flooded forest, etc. Um, the indigenous tribes, all, all, of the, all of the things that you immediately think of. But actually, um, this photo is taken two years into the expedition. We've only got four months um, less to go, left to go, but it's quite indicative of of just, um, I, I suppose, my mental state. And I think it, it was, everyone said to me before the expedition, this isn't gonna be a sort of display of Olympic strength or anything like that, or, or you don't need to have a, a particularly um, impressive skill set. This is gonna be the top two inches. This is gonna be a mental battle. Um, and yet it was the bit of the preparation, well, it was one of many bits of the preparation that I did nothing to address before the expedition. Um, and so I found myself in this predicament whereby um, I wasn't coping well, basically. Um, an example might be, Cho was, we agreed to leave at seven o'clock in the morning, rucksacks packed and on the move. Cho would be four minutes late, be four minutes past seven by the time he's, he's ready to move. And I'm fuming, literally seething with anger. And um, and I couldn't let go of it either. And, uh, and I, I mentioned this, there was a lovely lady who did all the publicity for the expedition for free. And I mentioned it in a, in an email to her and she said, well, one of my other clients is a neuro-linguistic program, programming expert, an NLP guru. Do you want to have a satellite phone call with him? Because he might be able to help you. And I was like, yeah, okay, I think that'd be a good idea. And it's not very run or finds, is it, to admit that you needed counseling in the middle of your expedition, but I clearly did. And so I had about three of these uh, satellite phone calls and he was just able to put things into perspective for me. He's just like, Ed, you've been away for two years of your life now, right? Everybody that you love is at home. You've put everything else on hold. But he said also, you've got things out of perspective because everything in your heart of hearts and everything is all about getting to the end. So, so anything that gets in the way of that is, it, it might as well be the enemy, you know. And, and if you're, if somebody's causing you to be later, then then you're unleashing hell upon them. And he just gave me a couple of layman tricks to get myself out of this. Com so somewhat childish, stroppy behavior, really. And one of them was to envisage somebody in my life that was really inspirational to me, somebody that wouldn't allow me to, to behave in this kind of indulgent way. And the first person that I chose to, to envisage was my first sergeant major in the military, who was a guy called Mark Hale. Um, he was an amazing guy. He had a big scar across his face from fighting as a kid, but he was, he was um, a rugby player. He was a very impressive man. He was doing an MSc in psychology. He was a, he was also a devout Christian, and he just had this aura of um, competence. You know, when you see like a rugby player who's just been there and done it, like Jono, if he was to walk in here, he's just like, you know, you wouldn't mess with him. And, and, and anyway, Mark had this, and um, I would, and when I'd feel myself sort of spiraling into one of these negative moods, I'd imagine Mark next to me just with a somewhat bemused look on his face, smiling at me, and saying, sir, what is going on? And um, it was just enough for me to step out, outside of that and realized that I would never behave like that in front of Mark, I'd never behave like that in front of most people. Um, and, and so it allowed me to get a little bit more perspective. The, um, this is Mark, and um, the, 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 the story is all, all the more pertinent, because I never used the internet to check the news. I didn't have enough bandwidth, I didn't have enough battery power. Um, but one day, for some reason, I just decided to throw caution to the wind, and I went on the BBC website, and the first article that came up was Soldier Dies in Explosion in Afghanistan. And it was Mark, and um, and I remember it happening, and I remember sitting down on my rucksack, and just thinking, this is, um, I'm, at first I questioned myself as to whether I was reading it correctly, because I was going a bit crazy at the time, and then I recognized that I wasn't going crazy, and that he had actually died. And it was definitely the saddest moment of the whole expedition for me, but as I was sitting there, I also thought, isn't it extraordinary that of all the people to choose to draw on in terms of to, to, to give myself the positivity to complete the expedition of, I've chosen Mark. And it latterly turns out, weirdly, from talking to his daughter subsequently after the expedition, that I started envisaging, envisaging him on the day that he died. So I'm not a religious man, but make what you will of that. I just thought it was somewhat extraordinary. It gets a little bit more lighthearted from this point onwards. Um, <coughs> the expedition was, um, for some reason, I had so much luck, and I, you know, I, I don't even believe in the word luck anymore. I think it's when the universe starts aligning, and I'm 
I'm probably quite will lord on the, on this subject in terms of I've, I've kind of shunned my my the military sort of pragmatic part of my brain and and we had so much luck you know um, and um, for many multiple reasons we didn't end up dying um, we didn't get any of the big tropical diseases no dengue no malaria no typhoid